thank you guys all so much for coming. It really means a lot to me that so many of you have an interest in not only learning about the project, but extending that knowledge more so to the neighborhood that inspired uh, this project. It essentially got started, um, I kind of like to think of it as the garden that's bloomed from the seeds that I planted as guest curator in VMF 2020. Um, when I came on board, part of my curatorial vision and proposal uh, for the team was to really center um, my chosen artists as black artists because I knew at the time VMF had been around for a few years, they had produced over 200 murals but only two had been by black artists. and. As someone who's very much integrated in Vancouver's art scene, I kind of knew from working with them that there was way more um, in the city and that um, they needed to be shown. And uh, the team was very receptive to it and they were like, yep, let's do it. And I specifically wanted to tell the story of Hogan's Alley at the time. And so um, that produced the beautiful mural done by Anthony Joseph um, on the viaduct itself that has won a BC Heritage Award and has had huge community impact um, and so it just was natural to really expand that curatorial vision to its own community project in of itself. Not only have we been working with black artists um, but we've also been working with other black curators so um, Chippo Chippaziwa was our emerging curator this year um, who brought on amazing artists. Um, we've also been working with different um, black organizations in the city. Uh, we've been working with different leaders. We have an advisory council of amazing black leaders from different industries who brought different skill sets to the table. Um, one of them being Vi Moore, who ran Vi Moore's Chicken and Steak granddaughter, Bertha Clark. So it was really beautiful, not only to hear Bertha's stories, but to kind of have her vision for how she wanted the project to look like as someone who actually lived in this neighborhood and was a little girl when the viaducts came up and displaced her from her home. Um, so this project, first and foremost, is about community building. For me, I like to take more of a placemaking focus, so that's really understanding the areas that the murals are being produced in first and foremost, talking to the people who live there, and really making sure that before we come into their homes and the places where they live, that we are respecting what they want the community to look like and that we are pushing forward um, with art that they can enjoy and be happy with every day. And then everything else comes second to that. In the vision and trying to render black communities visible, um, it was really important for me, for other communities in Strathcona, to not feel like we were rendering them invisible. So for me, it was important for those voices to also be a part of this project because um, ultimately, this is about solidarity and us moving forward together. And what my hope is, um, as I've been doing more research on um, public art, on placemaking, on understanding how transforming spaces can actually make spaces safer for marginalized communities, um, part of what my vision will be for the next couple of years for this project is convincing the city to um, really clean up the roads here so that we can actually have mural art um, all around, so not just on the walls, but on the ground as well, so that we're kind of walking into a new transformed space. How can we be intentional when we're transforming these spaces so that it can actually make these um, spaces safer and, and feel more inclusive? Um, and there have been a lot of models around the world who have started doing um, a lot of art on the ground um, and kind of three-dimensional so that when you're walking in, it's a transformed space. And so that's what I'm hoping to happen with this alley. You kind of see different styles amongst all the artists that are represented. Um, and that is also intentional very much to the curation. Um, for me, especially with the black artists that are involved, it was very imperative that I show that black artists are capable of doing different styles in terms of art. And that is to kind of break the whole um, monolithic thinking when it comes to blackness in terms of all black people are the same, whether that's as artists, whether that's just as people. Very intentional to show different, um, a range of styles that black artists are capable of doing as a way of humanizing them um, in a very unconscious way to people who are taking in the artwork. We're hoping for it to um, grow out um, from 
the concentration of where the murals are today um, in the next couple years. And we're really hoping that we can continue to center Black voices and Black storytelling. I want to also end by thanking you guys for even just being interested in clicking on this tour because it means a lot to me that um, you guys have an interest in this because this is why we did what we did. Um, to share it with all of you, for you guys to now go back and share it with other people and to kind of just, for me, everything I do is from an anti-racist and community building lens. So when I can step back and see all of this community that's growing from this project, it really means a lot to me. So thank each and every one of you for being here today. Thank you, Ali, <laughs> so much.